He represented the spirit of a shepherd. A shepherd that gives his life for the flock. And it was said that after, y'all going to have to stop that today. Not today. And he said, when I'm gone, grievous wolves shall come in and they will not spare. God often likens people's behavior to animals. The righteous he calls sheep. The wicked nation at times he calls goats. Some people have been called fox. Other snakes. Wolves. Dogs. Pigs. But Paul said grievous wolves will come and they will not spare the flock. You got some people that come as grievous wolves and they don't spare anyone. They don't spare the flock. They won't spare you. They won't spare your ears. Somebody help them young people. Get an understanding of what I'm saying. And so, many times you may have been in a conversation with someone, and when it's all said and done, you feel as though you've been chewed up, spit out, ripped up, as though you've been attacked by a wolf. The truth of the matter was, you were attacked by a wolf. The spirit of wolf. Amen? But what proves me? Words that kill come from people, spiritually speaking, that kill. What comes from the heart, the, the mouth speaking, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in the heart of some people is real treachery. You've got to be very treacherous and ungodly to continue to kill, to destroy others. And yet you have no conviction. Amen. And I pray that there's nobody here like that. You listen. Many times a bully bullifies other people because of their own personal problems. But if that bully has a heart at all, somewhere along the line they're going to wake up and say, listen, I need to stop picking. There was a girl in school, that, in the elementary school, that always jumped on and fought another young lady that came in. She was a fair looking. All the way through high school, she fought this young lady. And I never could understand why. The young lady would have a party, and I didn't go to party, but she would invite everybody, but I would just go because I don't know why I leaned toward the underdog. Somebody said, are you going to a party? I didn't go to a party, but I said, yeah, I'll go. And I went. Because I refused to side with the rest of the students. But then come to find out that the girl that was doing a lot of the bullying, almost every other morning, I think her dad might have been a police officer or something, but every other morning, her dad would fight her, black her eye, and beat her. And so she took that out on us. But it lingered all the way up to high school. I don't know to this day if her heart has ever pierced her. But because you have been bruised, there's no excuse to unrighteously and continuously bruise somebody else. The only thing you're showing is that maybe you deserve the bruising you're getting. You reap what you sow. Paul said that when I'm gone, grievous wolves will come in and not spare. And Peter is saying the same thing. He says, but there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among, everybody say us. us. Who probably shall bring in damnable heresies. Damaging words, damnable 
teachings. And eventually it says they would even deny the Lord that bought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. Who privately, secretly, unknowingly, behind closed doors, shall bring in damnable, destructive, dangerous heresies, teachings, speeches, words. Yes, the words will damn you. Words that kill. In other words, if you take heed to these words, to these understandings, it will cause your soul to be damned. Now how powerful is the word? They say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt. Words will send you to hell. Words will destroy your whole life. Words will destroy the life of another man or woman. Words will destroy your whole self-esteem. Words will put you in a state of depression that you don't know how to get out. Words will. At the same time, words can encourage you. Words can lift your spirit. Words can give you hope. It depends on the source of the words. They came to get Jesus. And in the garden, Jesus said, Why do you come to me as a thief in the night when I spoke openly before you? Now, I was talking, sometimes I talk to each and every one of you, especially if I think you may have a gift here and there, just to see maybe if God will word your mouth. You see, that's why it's important as a shepherd that you put the best you can of Christ in the lives of those that follow you. And that you encourage them to be as strong in God as they can, because there may come a time when you may need the Christ that is in those individuals. And if you put nothing but garbage in them, then they can't help feed you. They can't help help you. They can't help heal you. Neither do they have a word to strengthen you. But if you put in them that which is right, even in your time of weakness as a ruler, amen, the strength of Christ in the individual from your own teaching will rise up and save you also. Amen. So there's one thing you are blessed concerning myself, and that is God put certain things in us. And one thing I cannot do is deliberately, purposely tell you a lie. I cannot know something is wrong purposely to increase in growth or to increase in finances, Lord, to increase in popularity and then teach it knowing that it's a lie. That you ought to be grateful for. But, and sometimes we pull in our spirit because we want to be accepted. And many that are spiritual quench their spirit because they don't want to offend. I grew up in church like that. I grew up in life like that. Always having to pull in my spirit because everywhere I went, people turned. Even as a sinner, people turned. From jealousy, envy, strife, I had people that, not knowing it, they came up in a maybe a more structural home in a sense of manpower. But I had one individual that looked at me and he was very athletic. Very smart. Had a strong brother that he admired. He said, whatever you do, I can do more. And I never understood why. He, he, he didn't walk with my crowd, but he was well respected. And no matter what I did, he tried to outdo. And, I, and, and having an inferiority complex, I didn't understand why. He heard the coach say one day, you know who's the most feared guy in school? In the upper and lower grades. And everybody said, who? And he said, Brian. Everybody said, him? He said, yes, I'm the coach, I know. And that day on, no matter what went down, I can do whatever you can do better. And my senior year, I graduated with five musical scholarships. This gentleman comes up with a saxophone and says, whatever you want to play, I'll play on the last day of school. I looked at him. We've been friends all of, all, all of our high school, junior high school, what are you doing? I can play whatever you play. And I just played something simple and he read it and did all right. But I was shocked, I was puzzled. And as I got older, I realized that whatever he saw, he admired. He liked what he covered. And he used me 
uh, to promote himself and to stimulate himself. But it was with emulation. Whatever you do, I can do better. So he tried to do whatever I did. And I didn't understand that. You see, a lot of times people come at you because they see your worth sometimes more than you do. They see how valuable you are. And they can see your gifts and abilities and your talents. But you don't see it. Boy, and if they can keep you blinded, they got you. But my prayer is that God give us an awakening in our spirits. Let us see who it is you have caused us to become. The Bible says, make full proof of your ministry. And I say, make full proof of your life in Christ. Amen. Let God use your life to the fullness. And every ability and strength that you have, let it come forth in righteousness. Amen. And all the words that have come to kill you, amen, let the Spirit of God raise up a standard against them. Amen. That you may live, that you may flourish. And that you no longer have to hide in the shadows of other people Amen. and the criticism of other people and, 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 and the snares of the enemy. Amen. But by the power of the Holy Ghost, he can lighten your pathway. Amen. And you don't have to live your life saying, I've never ever lived to my full potential. Amen. Understanding that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. That's us. Amen. It is true that when you come to Christ, you must lose your life. Amen. That you may gain it. But in gaining this new life, being, being, amen, old things have passed away. All things have become new in this new walk. Let me walk with all the full potential that God has given me to please him. Let me walk in all the righteousness of God. Not being afraid, but standing up, understanding that God has not given me the spirit of fear. And I've lived by all my life, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, he's given me power and all the I live the life quenching, meaning what? Holding down my spirit because I don't want you to get upset. I don't want to hurt anybody. And they're steady doing the same with you. And you're trapped because you have been tricked by the enemy to ensnare your own soul. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And if you're not walking in the liberty of the Holy Spirit, then the Spirit of God ain't in what you're doing. Amen. Jesus said, You come against me with sword and shield as though I talk privately in a corner somewhere. He said, I didn't talk privately. I spoke openly. I spoke in your synagogues. I spoke openly. Now, this is a thought that came to me earlier, talking. We hold back our spirit many times because of a lack of approval of the situation of people around us. But may I politely tell you that God didn't tell you to seek the lack of a, seek the approval from men. And yet, and walking with God, he walks in a righteous path. Jesus was not approved by the people around him. And yet he made full proof of his life. He said, no, you all don't approve of me. He said, but I'm not going to speak in the corner. Because what I'm saying is right. I'm not going to privately come in and do nothing. He said, because what I'm saying is right. As a matter of fact, he said, whatever you do in secret shall be made known. Whatever you say uh, in secret, God's going to shout it on the house. Amen. Because that's what God does. He said, let your light show shine. He's going to say, hi. Now, if people don't like your boldness, and I'm not talking about ugliness. If they don't like your boldness in righteousness, if they don't like you walking in truth, if they don't allow you and, 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 and like you being who you are in Christ as your spirit grows and you excel in Jesus, you don't stop growing. You don't go backwards. Yes, you just have to go ahead and walk over all those feelings that are demonically inspired. Come on, because they are demonically inspired. Yes. 
Amen. The presence of God does not oppress you. The counsel of the Lord does not bring depression. The counsel and the wording of the Lord does not cause you to give up. But when you talk to these people, when you feel the presence that come with them, you feel every bit of that. Damnable heresies. Jesus said, be wise of the leaven of the scribes and Pharisees. What? The words. The thoughts, the teachings, beware. Beware of the words that come out of people's mouths. Amen. And the word of God is to judge that. He said, they will bring about, there shall be false teachers among you, privately bringing in damnable hatches. For what are the signs of falseness? And it's talking about false teachers, preachers, and false preachers, but also we can relate this to false saints. False people who say they can and they don't. First of all, they're false teachers among you. Now, what are they? Uh, first of all, they privately say things behind your back. They try to secretly plant things against you. And they can bring about damnable heresies. And when they get through teaching and talking to you, many times you almost begin to doubt the Lord. It brings about a spirit of denial Man. in the wrong things, mm -hmm. in the things that are against God. It brings about a denial in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Nobody moved by the Holy Ghost will cause you to have doubt in God's word. Amen. No man is wise enough or powerful enough to destroy the word of God when he said the scriptures cannot be destroyed. Amen. This is the word that we're living in today. And many, it says this, but, it says, even denying the Lord that bought you. When you deny the word of God, you deny Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Hello. You walk around with words that are damnable. You walk around bringing destruction to the lives of people by the words you say. You walk around teaching false teachings, amen, against the word of God. You will bring destruction upon yourself. Sacrifice for behind. Follow the scriptures. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth. Words that kill speak against the truth. Anybody that's known to talk to you with words that kill, please don't believe anything they say about you. Let that be a confirmation because they're lying. It says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Pernicious, harmful. Is what they said to you, is it harmful? Damaging. The conversation damaging. Destructive. Is it destroying your faith? Injurious. Is it causing you great affliction? Detrimental. You find yourself fighting for your very soul. Dangerous. Now you feel unsettled and you're, 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 you're somewhat afraid now. Poisonous. Now you're all confused because you've been poisoned from conversations, from words. Are you hearing me? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words kill you as you go along. This is not pretty. And the people that do it are not pretty. Amen. Don't ever take people's words lightly for granted. And say, oh, they're just words. Well, they're more than just words. They come from a source. Mm -hmm. And what is the source? Jesus. Come on. Jesus. They're more than just words. Jesus. Eve talked with Satan. Were well, they just words? Mm -hmm. These just words had consequences. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of, what's that? Because the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. These words come to break down your foundation and your hope in that which holds you up. Amen. It attacks the truth. Amen. Uh, anybody hear me? Amen. How do you know if somebody has the spirit of falsehood? Because they attack the truth. Amen. What is truth? Our word is truth. Yes, Lord. 
Listen, it doesn't make a difference how they look, male or female. You better look past that outward appearance and see the spirit that's working behind them. Because Absalom was David's favorite son, and he was a beautiful man. He was good looking. He looked better than his dad. I mean, the man, uh, his pride was his hat, and it cost him his life. He weighed his hair out, and he was, he, and he had royalty on both sides. His mother was the daughter of the king, and his daddy was the king of Israel. Good looking man. David had a soft spot for him, but this good looking man took ten of his father's wives. This good looking man tried to kill his father dead. Because his words Amen. came from another source. God said David was a man after my own heart, but his son, who looked so beautiful, who was so well loved of his father, said, I will take his son. You can't look at the faces, people. Amen. You have to look at the spirit that is motivating people. Because Satan himself appears as an angel of light. And yet he comes to kill, steal and destroy. How can I look to you and talk to you in the name of Jesus? And when I get you down properly, I go against everything that Jesus stands for. I can deal with his word. I can deal with his way of life. Amen. I even have confidence over his name. Pernicious ways by way the truth is not righteously divided, but evil spoken of. How can I be a man, you be a woman, as many people are trying to do, condemn and destroy and break down the word of God when we were not that? We didn't write it. We created nothing. And yet we got so many faults in our own life that we can't help ourselves, but we can correct God. Are you serious? Are you serious? We've got personal habits that we cannot overcome. We're confused every day. But we can correct God. We can direct the lives of others. When God said, if you can't straighten out yourself, please don't try to guide anyone else. Amen. This is what God said. Amen. And a lot of people say, if God is so good, then why is the world full of crime? Why are people getting molested? Why all this and why all that? If they just listen to the word of God, then maybe more people would believe. The Bible said after Jesus was baptized, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Break that down. That taketh away the reason why people are killing. The reason why people are being molested. The reason why people steal. The reason why people die. He come to correct the problem. That we created. Listen to what he said. Behold, what did God do for me? He has done something. He has called to take away the problem. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, except the elect. How do you know if you're really called to God and you think you can make an end because you're not going to follow the strange words? Amen. You're not going to follow anything that goes against the scripture. Amen. Your Holy Ghost and your heart won't let you. Amen. You cannot deceive the elect. It's impossible. Amen. It is impossible. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, dangerous, detrimental ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. There's a scholar that backslides him. And he writes different false books about the Christ. One gentleman, a young man, after reading his book, he said, after reading his book, he said, I don't know what to put. It just crushed the man's faith. He said, I don't know what to do. And yet, the man who wrote this says that in all the errors that he thinks that the Bible has, he said, the message of the prophecy and the message of the scripture is still intact. What a hypocrite. When you say there are more errors in the Bible than there are words, but yet the message is still intact, you're a hypocrite. You're a liar. Ain't no book can have that many errors and be right. The skeptics that criticize God's word, there's no new argument. It's been the same argument. The scriptures are corrupt. Somebody didn't write this. 
Somebody, this has been the same argument for almost 5,000 years. And the only thing remaining are those same scriptures. All the skeptics are dead. And not only that, the skeptics help prove the word of God right because the Bible says in the last days, mockers, skeptics, mockers will come. Amen. And they have come. Just like the scripture says. But they will bring to themselves swift destruction. As his earnest friend said, he said, and he too will pass. And many shall follow their dangerous ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Why do you have to feel as though you have to down somebody else to make yourself look good? Why is it that in your conversation to find favor with other people, you have to crucify somebody else's personality, a character, to get in good with that individual? That's a wrong spirit. So then why is it that if God has given you truth, if somebody is walking with God, that you have to try to speak evil against the word of God? To make yourself seem right. And if the scriptures are corrupt, put them down and never pick them up again. How can the scripture be corrupt and you try to use scripture to correct scripture? If one text is corrupt, then maybe all of them are. It's a matter of choice. Who you going to believe? The Holy Spirit. Word of God, a damnable spirit. How do you know if the spirit is of God or not? Because if it doesn't edify you in Christ, if it speaks evil against truth, you're dealing with a demon. I said you're dealing with a devil. Damnable heresies, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils that work through the mouth of men and women, and boys and girls. You young kids, y'all get up in school and you start talking crazy talk what you don't like, and who I hate this and that. You know you've been used of the devil Amen. to destroy and hurt the souls of other people. Amen. So don't you young folks think the devil can't use your mouth because he can't. Amen. But there's no, you get to talking ugly and having a spirit like that. You're being moved by a demon. Amen. And if you don't like the devil, then stop listening to him. Amen. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you, some of you young folks, all of you, get to talking crazy. I know right now you hear things. Amen. Some say, say it and you say it. Some move upon you and you speak it. Now, I got them told, no, a devil just use you. Because God doesn't work that way. You don't want God, young people, you don't want the devil to use you. And it says this, with pernicious, they're, they're pernicious ways, dangerous ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken. And through covetousness shall they with fins contaminate the words. Try to make merchandise out of you. Try to get over on you. Why else would somebody sit there and try to destroy your thing in Christ? Why else would somebody sit there and try to destroy everything you stand for? You tell me what's edifying in that. Why else would someone speak against the word of God? Or speak against that which is trying to help you? Or speak against those that are trying to help you? Why else would they do that? Trying to get over on you. And they see you breaking down. They're waiting to see if they can corrupt you. That's not a pretty person. Amen. That's not a pretty preacher. It's not a pretty husband. It's not a pretty wife. That's not a pretty brother, a pretty sister, a pretty grandparent, a pretty mother, or a pretty father. Amen. At all. It is not anything that would turn you against the word of God Amen. and turn you against your faith in God. My God, the next time any of you, I don't care who you're talking to, the next time somebody comes against the scriptures and then you tell them, so how long did it take you to create the heavens and the earth? Amen. Ask them. When they tell you it don't take all that to be saved, you tell them, so uh, tell me, how did it feel when they nailed you to the cross? Amen. When they tell you, I don't want to, listen, we ain't got to go through all of that, we can do what we want, you tell them. Can you tell me how you're going to stop the end of this world? What are you going to do to stop the destruction from coming? Amen. Well, I didn't hang on the cross. I didn't create the world. I can't stop the destruction when I'm talking to the wrong person. Amen. Peter warns us, and there shall be false prophets among us. And just don't look at us preachers. Don't look at all of them. Anybody that's preaching damnable doctrine is false. 
You go against the word of God, you are false. 100% demonic, 100% false. Your words are dangerous, and everybody that takes you, takes heed to it, will become damned. Because false words and damnable doctrine can't lead you to righteousness. Amen. Paul talked about those who have become shipwrecked concerning the gospel. How can the thing form, the thing created, tell the creator what to do? How smart are we that we can correct God's word and we can't even spell our own name? We don't know our left from our right. We cannot sustain our life. When the death comes, we can't keep ourselves alive. So listen, don't put your faith in the words of people. Put your trust in the word of the Lord. And don't allow people to persuade you to turn against the holiness of God. Amen. Peter is warning us. Now, somebody say, how you know that truth, Bishop? I'm glad to ask this you. Do you know anybody that comes to you with damnable words? Do you know anybody that comes to you with pernicious words? Do you know anybody that comes to you trying to get you to deny the doctrine of Christ? you know anybody that comes around and tries to put down the word of God? I say, have you heard? you know anybody that tries to put you down and everything they got to say is cutting you down and those that are around you trying to be strong and cutting them down? you know anybody like that? Well, then God always has to come for what? A confirmation. Well, then you see if it's true or not. And through covetousness, so they would fend words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. It's coming. For if God spread not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them in chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. What did God do to the angels that sinned? All right, he took care of them. And he will continue to take care of them. And, and, and it says this, and, and spread not the old world, but save nor the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the unwhat. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it what? Be in the days of the Son of Man. And what days are these? Are those? No. These. In the days of Noah, the imagination of man was evil how? <laughs> Demonic possession, evil thinking. They were married and given the marriage until the day of what? The flood came, building and, and what have you. And the Bible says the same thing that happened in the days of Noah is going to happen what? So we got a judgment coming, don't we? And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live what? Ungodly. And you got people going around saying, if God's such a loving God, uh, why do we want, you know, you know, people say we preach fear, what happened? Yeah, you fear the Lord, then you give God with reverence and you fear God with a good heart. But you also should be afraid to go against it. And somebody thinks that's so wrong. Well, why don't you just jump in front of a bullet on purpose? Are you afraid to jump in front of a bullet? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as I told one individual, why don't you set a fire outside your yard and go jump in? Why don't you? And then you got some people that do. You got some people that ain't afraid to jump in. Some believe in reincarnation. Some believe they want out, but they'll jump in and burn up. And you might look at them and say they fool. And indeed they are. But what I'm trying to tell you is, people say, why you got to fear hell? If you don't, they jump in a fire. And then maybe you think about it. It's not that we fear hell. It's that we don't want to go. Then we don't want to go. Amen. See, if you live a right, you ain't got to fear hell. It ain't that we fear hell, and we ain't trying to go. What we fear the most is living away from God. We don't want to be. Whatever you do, God, take not that spirit away from you. We fear the Lord. We reverence God. You see what I'm saying? But you know, that which is natural, that which is spiritual. If you think there's no eternal fire, amen, then there's no fire on earth. 
God gives us the things that I've seen. That the fire, if a man can bring forth fire, you think God doesn't have one that, that serves his purpose? Amen. And then if you don't believe it, that's one simple way to find out. And what is that? Never know. And then we'll find out how much of it is your life. You live and die. Death comes with the story. Isn't that right? If there is no death, that's the gateway into eternal life. If there is no death, then there is no dying. If there is no heaven, there is no hell. If you can prove the death away, then maybe the rest of the story is wrong too. But it's a powerful thing. You have a word like the word of God. Amen. That affects your life whether you believe it or not. In India, they have 33 million gods. India teaches that the, their gods, we call them demons, have been put over the nations and over the peoples and over everything. It's a Hindu teaching. You have, you, you, the, the Hindus worship the cows and different things, and this is why they don't eat meat, they'd rather die. You got many false religions everywhere. The Jehovah's Witness believe when you die, you just disappear, along with the Seventh day Adventists and some of the Church of God. You have uh, many different religions that say hell does not exist and there is no hell. All types of religions. You got the atheists, those that don't believe in God, those believe that aliens came down, and some believe we're going to fly away in the mothership. You got all kinds of religions. But isn't it funny? That the Word of God, which is the only book like it is, said to all religious believers, from thus you come, thus you shall return, Amen. and everybody that don't even believe in the word of God goes back to dust. Amen. Now that's a powerful piece of literature. That's a powerful word of expression that will affect you and you don't even believe in it, but yet it will happen to you. Because God is true. His word is true. And no matter what we say or do, does not eliminate or destroy the word of God that's forever settled in the heavens. You don't have to believe God's word. It will still stand. We set a fire on God myself. There is no God beside me. My word will not go out of the You think it's not true, then you tell God in your heart you don't believe this word. You step out on your own, because some have done it. You got some people that don't fear man nor God. But once again, the word of God is going to come to pass. Somebody say, how is that? I'm glad that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. If you can't explain the way death, then you might have to shut the book. As in the first chapter. If you can't prove that men don't die, go back to dust. There ain't no sense in talking about anything else what you don't believe. You can't even put away the first chapter. Words that keep them. Don't let the Lord use, don't let the devil use your mouth for destruction. And don't let the destructive tongue of others destroy you. Lord, protect me against the words that keep them. The words and the teachings that come forth to destroy it. Teaching is everything. Words are everything. My sons, you get in your car, my beloved, and if I give you direction, but the last street, you should take a right, and I said take a left. And I have written these instructions down, and I've told you. But I gave you the wrong turn. Because at the left, the bridge is out. And you turned and didn't see the sign. Or you saw the sign, but you believe my word because I never told you wrong. And if something don't stop you, if you don't stop, what will happen? You're going to fall off the bridge. And what caused you to fall off the bridge? My what? My wrong direction, which consists of what? Words. My wrong words. The wrong words of individuals will cause you to crash. The wrong words of individuals will destroy you. And the tongue is a small member. 
James said, it said, but the tongue boasted big things. You ever seen, don't okay, care how big the car is or how big the truck is? It's a steering wheel that controls that big old diesel. It said the tongue is small, remember, but it boasted big things. And you know what it said? It said it is a world of sin, iniquity. And it says the tongue is set on fire by the course of Gehenna, hell, the lake of fire. Some people's tongues, your words come straight from the lake of fire. Because those that follow it, that's where they go. May God purge out. Amen. The spirit of a falsehood come in secret. Can't bring it to the light. Why is that? Because the light ain't going to happen. The light's not going to accept it. At all. You tell the truth by the fruit of man. You be the first to eat your own words and let us see how it nourishes you. The way you think about others, you get mad. You young people hear me. You want to get mad and talk about each other? First sit down and say, what well, if somebody talk about me like that? How would I? Now, if you don't like it, if you can't eat it, then don't poison anybody else. I am a minister of the God. And I pray not by self-proclamation to be righteous. But what I would tell you, and I will tell you with all my heart, I will give my life for every dotting of the I, every crossing of the T, and every doctrine that I say God told me, I will die for. No matter how big or how small. Because I believe it's nourishing. And I try to let my life show forth. If I give it to you, I will eat it myself. To the point that if you say, I don't know what I want to eat, I will not change my diet. I will still eat it. Because if I be your God and I say it's a God, then I should stand on it. The prophet said, sin is so wicked and rapid that the righteous man hide himself. Well, it's time for the righteous to come out. Speak up. Stand strong. This is the church of the living God. This is the only place the gates of hell cannot prevail against. But the enemy will probably try to sneak in, but they will not prevail. And they'll do damage. But what is the damage they do? Anytime you've been led by false doctrine, by pernicious and dangerous speaking, God is trying your heart to see if you're going to remain. And if you don't remain, it's just you've just been purged. I have to church. Don't whether you got purged. You got removed. Your heart was tried and you didn't stand. Who's well loving father, mother, brother, sister, or wife, or daddy more than me is not worthy. You must put God first. Because nobody, and I'm telling all my children, I cannot stand in heaven for you. I can only teach you how to get there. But when it comes to judgment, you can't say, Jesus, let me ask my daddy. Jesus says this is out of daddy's jurisdiction. It's me and you now. Let me ask my grandmama and my granddaddy. No, grandparents can't help you now. Mommy can't help you now. Your brothers and sisters can't help you now. You live your life, this is me and you. What have you done for me? How have you served me? You want to be able to say, I serve you. You want to be able to say, I serve you. So that's why you follow those who follow Christ. If I stop following Jesus, you stop following me. But you keep following Jesus. But as long as I follow Jesus and he bears witness to what I'm teaching you and you see the good fruit, you keep eating. You keep eating. You don't want to eat the food of those that, that, that what they have ain't helping themselves with nobody around them. Holy Ghost ain't wishy watching. Not double-minded. Not always doubting the word of God. That's not the Holy Spirit. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Now, what time have you heard the prophets or somebody down and say, this is corrupt?
Words that kill. Don't let anybody sit there and put anything in there. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. I feel a virtue. Can I give one last example? Can I? For my young people. Young brothers, y'all having a good time playing with each other, young sisters. And everybody's laughing, and maybe one young brother or one young sister said, I gotta go to the restroom. And when they go to the restroom, somebody else starts talking to the brothers that are around. Man, he ain't no good. He was talking about you, man. He was just talking all kinds of crazy stuff. And somebody else starts talking to the rest of the young ladies. Look at the young lady that went away, laughing. Girl, you don't want to be their friend. You don't want to do this. Just talking, jump in that. And when the people come back, they notice everybody's not laughing and smiling. They notice that's a difference. And they behave. And they wonder if it's a moment. Is it somebody I've been talking about? Uh huh. Somebody just took words and poisoned the minds of the people you were just laughing with. The only thing that changed when you left, the conversations changed. They begin to put you back, they begin to talk about you. And then you know who's your friends, young people. Because when everybody's gone, Somebody's gonna stand up and say, girl, child ain't did this thing, but I didn't buy you. Your friend's gonna stand up and say, I didn't accept you. They're gonna say, no, no, no. I ain't in this. But they'll never go along with it. Never go along with it. And they know it's wrong. Because their hearts won't let it. That's the power to show you that words you can damage you. It can turn you against people. And then the scripture says, a tail bearer who can finish it. Divides and separates not just friends, but the best of friends. A tail bearer. Somebody goes around talking and lying and causing gossip. If I buy this, that, this, that, can separate the best of friends if they're not careful. And when it all grows up, if they're good friends, they'll come and bump heads and they'll realize, oh, we've been playing. We've been playing. Words that kill. Next time you get mad, my young people, hold your peace with your parents, with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Hold your mouth. Don't you say that word that you feel in your anger. Hold it. Let's go for the adults too. The tongue is set on fire by the course of the lake of fire. The hell it was prepared for the devil and the devil. And sometimes it's truth to say, woman, man, what in hell are you saying? Because you're talking with a mouth full of hell. And it's hot. And it's damaging. Lord, purge our tongues, purge our hearts. Words that keep protectors from falsehood that come in proper to destroy our very things. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable. May the words, I don't play with devils, and I love you all with all my heart. But if you're demonically inspired, inspired, I will tell you, and I will not stand down. My obligation is not to my family first, not to the church, but it's to the Lord Jesus Christ who has called me to be an apostle of the living God. And I stand against every false doctrine, every false teaching, and I will accept my words over yours. God show me this. And tell you to stop in front of what I preach. Because you don't play with the souls of people. Who is man to correct God? Not one has and not one will. Our job is to understand the word of God in his way. Not to correct. We don't have the intelligence. But we do have a spirit. And he leads and guides us. 
Now one time, one time, if you can hear me on. One thing is corrupt, or make you think the other writings are not corrupt. Be wise, don't be foolish. Anybody can say it's corrupt, now what you got? Well, I got this book, that's corrupt. I got this one, that's corrupt. I got this one, that's corrupt. That's corrupt. God is not going to allow man to destroy them. Corruption from corruption equals corruption. Don't be a hypocrite. You know? If I read something that says something is corrupt, what makes you say what I'm reading is corrupt? The Holy Ghost will make this. He knows it. Precious God, do that. Acceptable life. Give us the strength not to be deceived. And so many churches are falling away according to the word of God. And help us to bind the spirit of falsehood and the damnable tongue that comes to speak evil of the way of truth. Help us to come forth and make full proof of our life in you. And not be suppressed by evil spirits that work with other people. We rebuke the evil tongue. Give us strength, raise us stand. And we may stand strong. And be bold in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, church, amen. Presence that comes on you when people are speaking evil, if it's not right, then you know it out of God. If you give it to that spirit, you give it to the same thing. Let that devil remain in God. You stand. Fresh of God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. My time is upon us. I speak peace. Be still. Peace in the mind. Open our understanding. In Jesus' name.